Now we will discuss uh, the effect of the magnetic field to the uh, moving charge. Um, first, we will uh, discuss the magnetic field that is uniform. First, because this is a simple uh, example. Okay, the uniform here means that the magnetic field has. Uh, the same magnitude everywhere and point to the same direction everywhere that is the meaning of the uniform magnetic field okay and we know that if a charge particle move in a region that have the that has the magnetic field the magnetic field will exert uh, the magnetic force on the particle anyway we have discussed this before that the magnetic force is equal to Q V cross B and from this formula it means that we have to uh, involve with the uh, three-dimensional vector it means that we need to express uh, this relation in three dimension because this term V cos B. Okay. V cos B is a vector that points perpendicular to the plane that formed by V and B. Okay. And to write the three dimensional vector in the plane, right in the paper or on the screen like this, in the two dimensional screen or two dimensional paper, this is quite difficult. Okay. So we need the way to express this three-dimensional vector. Uh, one of the simple way we use and we uh, frequently use, uh, especially when we talk about the, the magnetic field, is this system. That is, we will express the vector that point out of the screen by a dot, or uh, you may you may see in some book or some text it is like it will write a dot at the center of a circle okay if you have a circle like this and a dot like this which express the vector that point out of the paper or point of the screen and for the vector that point into the paper or into the screen we use the cross sign or we you write the cross inside a circle like this okay so in this if we use this system and if we have a moving chart if it is a positive chart and move with a velocity vector like this okay from the right hand loop you point your forefinger in the direction of velocity vector and you point uh, the magnetic field vector out of your palm. It means that in this case, it's point out of the uh, screen or of the paper. The, it, your thumb will point upward in this direction. So this is V cross B. And also since the, the charge this is a positive charge, so we have the direction of the direction of the magnetic force will point the same uh, direction as the V cos B. Okay, but if you have the negative charge move in the same direction, okay, V cos B will point upward in your thumb direction if you point your forefinger in the direction of V and your uh, uh, and the magnetic field point out of your palm in this case it point, point out of the paper or the screen your thumb will point upward but we have a negative sign here which means that the FB will point downward like this okay Uh, now, if the magnetic field point inside 
the screen and you have the positive charge with the positive velocity vector like this okay again your four finger point to the direction of v and your palm uh, and the uh, magnetic field vector point out of your palm in this case you can see that your thumb will point downward like this and this is the direction of v cross v and if the charge is a positive charge it means that it is also the direction of fb but if the charge is a negative charge okay so you will have fb point upwards like this okay so this is the way of a convenient way that we can use to express the vector in three dimension on uh, the two-dimensional plane, two-dimensional paper, or on the two-dimensional screen. Okay. Now, we can see that in the case that the velocity vector perpendicular to the uh, magnetic field, like in this case, in this figure, velocity vector point on this plane and the magnetic field point into the plane perpendicular to the velocity vector. When you use the right hand loop, okay, your thumb will point in this direction and since this is a positive charge, it means that your, uh, the magnetic force will point in this direction. And from the uh, cross product, the property of the cross product, we know that this magnetic force will perpendicular to the velocity vector. When a particle move in the move uh, under the force that perpendicular to the velocity vector, we know that the trajectory of the particle will be a circle. The the uh, the force will change the direction of the velocity only, but not change the magnitude of the velocity. We, we learned this before in uh, General Physics 1. Okay, So, this kind of force will make the particle move in a circle, and we call this the central force. We know that the magnetic force will act as a central force for the charged particle and the force will make the particle move in a circle. Okay, So we have that the magnetic force is equal to the central force. And in this case, since the velocity vector is perpendicular to the magnetic field, we know that um, we know that V cross V, the magnitude of V cross V is V B psi theta. In this case, theta is pi over 2. Okay, so psi of pi over 2 is 1. So we have the magnitude of V cross V is V B. Okay. So we substitute this VB into the magnitude of FB. So we have QVB. And we know that this QVB is equal to the central force, which is the FC. And we know from uh, physics 1 that FC is mv squared over r, where m is the mass of the sharp particle, v is the uh, speed, uh, the magnitude of the velocity, and r is the radius of the circle. Okay, I is the radius of the circle. So we have that QVB equal to MV squared over R. So in the case that we know the mass of the uh, charged particle, we know the speed of the charged particle, we don't know the charge 
of the particle and we know the magnetic field, we can calculate the radius of the circle of the trajectory of the uh, particle okay, from this relation. We can also know the, the uh, angular frequency of the particle that uh, circle uh, that move in this circle as uh, omega, which is omega is equal to v o r. Uh, in this case, this is the uh, angular velocity. Okay, the angular velocity is equal to angular frequency. Okay, and this is e equal by definition. This is equal to v o r. And from this relation, if you if you can see that. You can write V over R as Q B O M. We call this omega as a cyclotron frequency. Okay. Why? What what uh what the name cyclotron come from? We will talk about this later. But you can see that this omega is independent of the velocity of the particle and the uh, radius of the circle. It depends only on the charge of the particle, the uh, magnetic field, and the mass of the particle. This can be really useful, and we will talk about it later. Okay. Uh, in this case, we talk about the case where the velocity vector perpendicular to the uh, magnetic field. What will happen if this is not the case? If the velocity vector uh, does not perpendicular to the magnetic field. <clears throat> we will have this kind, this situation. In this situation, we have that <clears throat> the velocity vector, we may write the velocity vector like this. Okay? Which we can <clears throat> uh, write it as a component, right? That the component that perpendicular to the uh, magnetic field and the component that uh, parallel to the magnetic field. Okay, I, uh, the let me write this velocity vector like this okay so you have the perpendicular component and parallel component like this <coughs> so if you have a, a sharp particle that move in this direction okay not perpendicular to the magnetic field but have some component that parallel to the magnetic field you may write this as V perpendicular and this V parallel. Okay. Now, when we look at the magnetic force F B, which is equal to Q V cross P. Okay. We can also write this as a Q. V perpendicular plus V parallel cross V and this is equal to Q V perpendicular cross V plus V parallel cross V okay <coughs> And when we look at these two terms, you can see that the V perpendicular is mean that the theta or the angle between the velocity vector and the uh, magnetic field is pi over 2 or 90 degree. So that we, that's why we call this the V perpendicular. And the sine of the pi over 2 is 1, right? Wow, in this, the second term, this is a V Parallel. It means that the theta or the angle between this component with the magnetic field is zero, right? Because this is parallel, and sine zero is zero. 
So it means that if we write the magnitude of this term, it will be v v sine zero, which is zero. Okay, and the 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 vector that have which uh, the vector that has the zero magnitude is zero. So it means that we can neglect this term. This term is go to zero, <coughs> right? So we have only the uh, the perpendicular <coughs> component like this. It means that the magnetic force will Okay, if you point your forefinger in the uh, velocity vector that <coughs> uh, the perpendicular component of the velocity vector and your uh, palm, your, the, the magnetic field point of your palm, your thumb will point downward in this uh, position. So this is a FB. And the FB will act as a uh, central force Again. So it will make the particle move in a circle. But in this case, we also have the this component, okay, this parallel component. So the particle will move into uh, direction in the same time, or may, we may say that into trajectory in the same time. One trajectory is a circle, which have the uh, circle around the the, the axis that parallel to the uh, magnetic field. And the second component is move uniformly uh, along the parallel component of the velocity vector. And the total trajectory is a helix, or we can say that this is a helical path like this. It's like a coil spin. Okay? You move in a circle in the same time that you move with a constant, uh, constant speed in this direction. Uh, <clears throat> in many uh, magnetic phenomena that you uh, let uh, or fire the, the sharp particle into the magnetic field, you will, you will see this kind of helical part. It's, this come from the, that come from the, these two components of the velocity vector.